Hi. In the last week's keynote, I spoke to you about, uh, I mentioned the four major Italian-American organizations. Most people speak in terms of three. I added the National Organization of Italian-American Women because I think that while it may be uh, smaller, quote unquote, than the other three, it sometimes loses its national identity. And when I say smaller, I don't mean necessarily in membership because there is indeed a large membership, but the fact that they may not have their own building or something to that effect. In any event, I think it's important that we start this one Stutzikino. Uh, I need to start it with the sort of caveat that I'm going to just throw out some ideas. It is uh, a theme, the Italian American woman, that we definitely cannot cover in one Stutzikino, no matter how long uh, I may speak, chat here, and chatter. Uh, the important thing is that uh, we begin this sort of conversation, at least in this in this format. And so I would ask you to um, send follow-up ideas that we might be able to touch upon uh, to, the, uh, to the email of, of the listserv of the portal iitaly.org. And I'll be happy to follow up. And um, who knows, maybe we'll even follow up with another person. So we'll see. But you know, I, I want to throw out a couple of things. One, um, just, just within the last, let's say, 25 years, 30 years, of course, there's Geraldine Ferraro and what she has done as far as being the first candidate, first woman candidate, first Italian-American candidate for the vice presidency. Um, and we, and um, the other uh, person, of course, of the last 25 years is the fact that someone like Nancy Pelosi has ascended to the level of um, Speaker of the House. And there, of course, we had, as with, with, with uh, um, uh, Geraldine Ferraro, two barriers broken, one being the gender barrier and one being the ethnic barrier. Um, so that's one, one part. The other thing we need to think about is who historically, and now of course there are some religious figures we can think about, Mother Frances Cabrini for example is one, but I want to bring it into effect, an Ital bring into the discussion an Italian woman who is well known around the world and who, fat, who in fact spent some of her time during her life outside of Italy um, and actually in India, and that's Maria Montessori, who was an educator, uh, a, a medical doctor, um, and held other titles, let's say. What she did, though, of course, was devise a, a, a method, an educational method, that it was, is, continues to be considered truly revolutionary in um, getting students to learn, especially children, young children, getting them to learn and getting them to use their own abilities in, um, in a way in which they uh, react to the environment around them and how they can learn from it. And of course, we know that there are all these Montessori schools around the United States, for example. So these are some of the things I think we need to s begin to examine. This is part of, I talked in the previous Tutsikino about endowed chairs and how we can get information out. Well, this is one, let's say, bit of, tad bit of information we can get out. That is, who was Maria Montessori, for example? Not just Italian, but indeed an international figure, as I said, having lived outside of Italy for a number of years and having um, developed this revolutionary method of education. Um, and I just want to close by reminding everybody that in the year 2010, the Italian Heritage and Culture Committee of New York has adopted Maria Montessori as um, uh, the, the person to be honored, uh, the, whose memory will be commemorated, and whose accomplishments will be commemorated this year. So stay tuned for that and other venues you'll hear about. And I look forward to hearing from you about not just Maria Montessori, but Italian American women overall. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata.